My full name is Linda Bell, with an E, Powell. And um, I've lived in Bristol since 2001, but I've worked here starting in 1985. I worked at First National Bank, so I've been here uh, for quite a while. I worked at the bank for 15 years and then we purchased our home and uh, so I've lived there since, what, 21 years? We've lived there 21 years. The Bristol, Indiana Heritage Society I think is a very good organization to have in a town. Uh, it's very important what's gone on in our town and that we remember the things and the people and the events that have happened in our town. So I think it's very, very good to have this Indiana, Bristol, Indiana Heritage Society. In August of 1821, the U.S. government bought our land here in Bristol from the Potawatomi Indians. They then declared it to be public lands and they put it up for sale. And there were three people who bought the majority of this land here in Bristol. And they were Reuben Bronson, George Judson, and he was using, actually he was a New York um, real estate broker and he was using um, Lewis Alverson is his power of attorney land agent and Hiram Doolittle. These people were very important because they platted out our land in February 5th of 1835. All lots were 66 feet across and 132 feet to the, to the back. These lots were numbered one, two, three, consecutively like that. And they started uh, with the lots um, at the corner, the, the north east corner of Vistula Street and Division Street right at the bridge. The old Stoll House was lot number one. They moved east with those lots until they had the whole town platted out. By May 3rd of 1835, Washington Township was formed, and two years later, all the land, the public land, had been bought up. You know, in two years, everybody bought up all the land. It was, you know, that's good. Uh, the roads in our township are mainly built around Indian trails and the first one, there are three of them, the first one starts in Elkhart and comes up the river to Bristol and then wraps around and goes up into Montville, Michigan. Uh, the next one is County Road 8 going from Bristol to Middlebury and the third one that we still use to this day is State Road 15 going south of town and meandering through the Fruit Hills. One thing that I thought was really interesting was when I, when you look at maps, those roads that angle off are generally old Indian trails. And I never knew that. I just thought that was pretty interesting. There were, when I got interested in learning about the house, I went through the abstract, that, those thick abstracts, and I found 17 people that owned either the property or the house here in Bristol, in my house. And I'll read you some of those names because I think those names are important. Uh, some people might recognize relatives or um, friends that they might have and so I'll read them to you. Uh, Reuben and Nancy Bronson, they had it in 1834. George and, Bets and Betsy Judson, Hiram and Lucy Doolittle, Louis Alverson, Solomon Keaton, Philoson 
Wheeler to lotion. And that was in 1841. Larice Warren. Allison Arnold in 1842, and Samuel Stancliffe. Now, these people just owned the property. There was never a home on the land when they owned it. And the house was built by Henry Fowler in 1844. And at that time, his brother Solomon Fowler, who later built the Solomon Fowler Mansion, on the west edge of town was living with him. The next owners were James Wells. He bought the house for $850. Homer Adams, Franklin Romaine purchased the house in 1880. And it wasn't until 1891 that the three lots where the coin shop is, the house and the back property were bought together. The purchaser was Emma Barber, which I thought was interesting that Dr. Barber's wife owned the house instead of Dr. Barber. They bought all three properties together and they used the coin shop for Dr. Barber's office. After Dr. After, um, Dr. Barber's wife passed away, that would have been in 1938, the house was in probate for two years because the children couldn't decide what they were going to do with it. They were in New York and in California and they just couldn't all get together. So finally in 1941 Marguerite and John Landis bought the house. And after um, John passed away then his grandson John Stout bought the house in 1989 or 1998. Yeah. And they were there for three years. They were expanding family, and his wife wanted to live in a neighborhood for the kids to play in. So um, we bought the house. How we got the house, because everybody wanted to purchase the house probably to tear it down, um, was that my, my uh, husband had put in the uh, rent uh, agreement that he would get first rights of buyership, and that's how we actually got to get the house, was um, they had to offer it to us first. And so we said yes. There are many people who sworn that they grew up in the Landis house. When the Landis owned the house, um, they had four children who had all these friends and they would go, you know, the door was always swinging open one way or the other all the time. It was always full of kids. In 1955, John Landis um, took out a mortgage and built on a large rec room and a bedroom and eventually a workshop was added too. While they were getting the um, money to build the rest of the rec room, Mary Ann said she could remember that she was roller skating on the, the slab of cement that was there. Once they finished the rec room, all the kids in the neighborhood, i sure it was probably the first rec room maybe in Bristol, I don't know, but all the kids were there and all the teenage girls can remember coming over and they would go upstairs and they would climb out a window and go on the top of the rec room and sunbathe. Well, all the boys in town were real interested in that and they couldn't quite see it from the um, banner office, the old banner office across the street. And Pinky, Pinky Mosher told me that they would go over to the opera house, up in the upstairs of the opera house, and they could see the girls sunbathing really good. So when the girls got done sunbathing, they'd go down and sit on the front porch so that they could watch all the boys over at the, at the banner office. The threshold in the living room has um, is marked with the heights of the um, four children, 
Bud, Jane, Susie, and Mary Ann. And their heights, I have preserved that, and I won't let anybody paint over it, and it's still there to this day. Hopefully we'll be there forever. Perhaps the most interesting thing about my house is there is a tunnel in the basement. And it runs under the living room, under the dining room, which is quite long, long, and it comes up in a trap door in the kitchen. The tunnel is made with a uh, river rock on both sides of the tunnel. And I often wonder, could it have been used as a safe house for the Underground Railroad? I'll let you think about that. Maybe it could have.